Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, yes, we are a webinar and we don't mind if you call us that. Uh, uh, and we we Encompass Live is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, the show is an hour long officially, um, but we will go long or short as necessary. Uh, we both um, we rec we post the show on Wednesday mornings, but you're, if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do always record the show every week, so if you need to, if you're not available to join us on Wednesdays, you can always go to our website and look at our archives, and I'll show you where all those archives are at the end of today's show. Both the live show and the archives are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with your colleagues, uh, friends, neighbors, family, anyone who you think might be of interest interested in any of the topics we have on the show we and and share them with the, the live shows if they want to sign up for those or if they want to watch any of our recordings um, our recordings um, do go back quite a ways we started encompass live in 2009 so we do have all of our archives back there um, so do keep that in mind that some of the topics or things that are mentioned may be officially out of date um, but everything is, is dated so you'll know when it was actually um, broadcast and recorded <clears throat> but we are librarians so we archive and save everything so it's all out there for you to watch. Uh, we do a mixture of things here on the show, book reviews, interviews, uh, training sessions, demos of services or products. Uh, really our only criteria is that it's something library related, something libraries are doing, something we think libraries could be doing, um, new, new resources, services, anything. Um, some of the topics you might look at the title and say, what is that? Why is that on the show? But trust me, everything always comes back to libraries. That's that's the key um, here. So we do sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff do presentations and sessions on things that are uh, more Nebraska-centric, specific to what we're doing here in the state. But we do also bring on guest speakers. And um, that's what we have this morning. On the line with us is Amy Newberry, who is the director of the uh, McLean County Public Library in Livermore, Kentucky. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Krista. How are you? Good I'm doing good. How are you? Good. All right. Fair, fair hmm? I said we're fair to Midland anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we've noticed on the session it did say that also along with us would be um, Angela Smith, who's the outreach coordinator from their library. However, um, she's she's kind of watching from the sidelines today. They were a little short staffed this morning, so Amy's going to be uh, handling this all on her own, which I think you'll do just fine. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and um, we can comments in the comment box if we need it. So yes, true. yes, that's true. Yes, <laughs> yes, Amy, if you're out there, or no, a Angie, if you do see anything you need to comment on, I'm watching the questions box here. Type in something, and I'll let Amy know. <laughs> So um, our topic for today, the official topic you see here, is how to break up boredom, um, interactive events for all ages. Uh, and this is a, sounds like a lot of fun what they've been doing at their library. And I'm just going to hand it over to you, Amy, to take it away and tell us about what you've been doing there. All righty. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, everybody. McLean County Public Library. We were the last library formed in the state of Kentucky. We have been here a grand total of starting our sixth year beginning May the 1st of this year. So we came, we came to a non-library cultured area. Uh, we have a very small county and there was about 9,400 people in the entire county. The city where we were located uh, has about a thousand people in it. So a lot of our patrons come by the Ankle Express, uh, bicycle or skateboard or just wandering by. Um, we do, our county is spread out, it shapes more like a pork top and we're down in the bottom fat corner and we reach all the way across the county with our bookmobile service which of course Angie is our outreach coordinator extraordinaire and she handles our bookmobile as well as the programming here in the library. We as you might imagine have a very very small budget. We are a taxing district. To those of you in Kentucky you know exactly what that means and maybe across the state, United States you know as well uh, but we have a very very small budget. I have three full-time staff members including myself. So. Um, when we did our first annual state report, as you might imagine, we were at the bottom on all of the rankings, whether they be programming events, attendance, 
collection, whatever. And I'm pretty smug and, and proud to report, and it's due to Angie's hard work. Um, last year, we were number one per capita in children's programming across the state. Awesome. It's That's great. <laughs> we were pretty fickle with that. Um, yeah. Just to give you some background on this, um, when I say we do things on the cheap, we mean it because we have a very small budget. People come to the library, and coming into a place that has no library culture, they think, oh, library, brick building, full of books, pretty boring, dry, dusty, and all the women are old and they wear their hair in a bun. Okay. None of that applies to any of us. Yes, we have a very old building. It was built in the late 1800s. It is a two-story building, which gives us a great programming space upstairs. I've got a meeting room that holds about 23, it's about 2,300 square feet. So we can put a pretty good crowd of folks in there, particularly if they're little folks. So we decided that we need to be a cultural center, we need to be a, a learning center, we need to be an activity center, a family center, all those sorts of things happening in our building. And so we have become that for our county. Um, we had a lot of naysayers. We had lawsuits filed. We won't get into all of that because that's a whole different webinar. But um, people are starting to say, hey, if it's not happening at the library, it's not happening in town. So that's what we were after. And we started some of these programs. Uh, to the delight of everybody, parents, children, and grandparents involved. So I'm going to zip through these slides and show you some of the things that we have been doing here in Livermore, which is in McLean County, Kentucky. We all know when you start to plan an event, you have to get your planning straight. There's two methods of planning, according to McLean County Public Library. You can have planning meetings. You can have committees. You can assign the tasks, uh, follow-up meetings, lots of paperwork. You appoint people here, there, and yon. Well, there's three of us. <laughs> if the three of us can't sit down and say, this is what we want to do, this is how we want to do it, you do this, you do that, which is kind of our method of planning. Um, this is an official program planning form. This was gleaned from Adult Programming, a manual for libraries, printed in 1997, as you can see. And they say, put all these things down on paper. And it's helpful, I will admit. Who is your organizer? Who is your audience? What are your goals? The date and time, if you're going to have a guest speaker or a guest presenter or someone, have them come in, how much money you need, who's going to handle publicity. This is the way that McLean County Public Library plans events. We need to do something. Angie and I plan across the wall, literally. Her office is next door to mine. We're separated by a very thin drywall. And we yell, what sounds like fun? Have we got any money? Who can we, who can we solicit for donations? That is the key when you're doing programming in a very small area with a very small budget. And we divvy things up. You get this, I'll get that. Do we forget anything? Make sure you call your local newspaper. We have a weekly newspaper here in the county. It appears on Thursdays. And everybody says, well, I didn't see it in the paper. But if you ask somebody, well, we read the paper every day. It's one of those things. They go back and forth. But make sure that you get the word out. Now, we put up flyers. We put up posters. We put signage out in front of the library. We have a TV with a flip thing going on it all the time, a crawler about the events happening in the library. Some people see it. Some don't. But we always put things in the children's backpacks at school. Angie, that's one of her many tasks every week is we print a small booklet that has all of our activities for each month in them, and she gets them to the schools to divvy out to the teachers. And that helps a great deal to get the word home because the parents will at least take the papers out of the backpack. Some of them get on their refrigerator, some of them get buried in a pile of crap. We all know that. But it has improved the communication uh, to get things out in the school system and get it on the school's website if you can. Always, always have a contingency plan. You think, I've got the greatest game in the whole wide world, and it's going to take place out in front of the library, it's on the sidewalk, whatever, and it will rain. So always think of something you can do inside. Keep your audience. Don't just say, oh, I'm sorry, we canceled it. Always, always have a contingency plan, something that you can do inside. Maybe we have used kids as game pieces. We have used foam core on the floor for bases and for uh, board spaces and that sort of thing. You can just scale it down to have it inside, and then you can always just play board games if, if all else fails. And our kids love board games. I don't know if your kids in your areas do, but it's something that... I know, it's a little extra contact, I think, and they, they do enjoy the board game. One of our favorite is Googly Eyes, which is very interactive. You notice the kid in the middle of the picture has on an oversized pair of glasses. They distort the vision. He's trying to draw that Coke can in the middle of the table. 
and uh, yeah, it doesn't really look like a, a soda can when you <laughs> when you finish with it. But that's some of our some of our small kids um, get into googly eyes, and it's amazing what they come up with. They pass the glasses around. Um, they have a huge time with that. Quelf is another board game that we play inside when it rains. You'll notice the foam on the floor. Those are the spaces for the board. It's very interactive. Any of you have ever played Quelf or not played Quelf, there's different cards in it. The children draw different, and it's, you know, smell your partner's shoe or play patty cake in the middle of the floor or stand on one leg, or there's all sorts of different activities. And, yes, it will be noisy. It won't be like a normal shh, be quiet library, but we kind of like that where we are. Out front, uh, this was a game of trash get ball using trash cans and basketballs. You can see the kids in the middle going for a, a dunk shot there. Um, our mayor in our town is super pro-library, which is very nice to have. And we will call him in the morning and say, we want to shut the street off for a couple hours. And he says, fine, I'll bring you a barrel and some cones. So you see the blue barrel and the cones. And we park the bookmobile across the other end. And we play in the street for an hour or two. Very cost efficient if you look. That's somebody neighbor's trash can. Every kid has a basketball, it seems like. We divide in teams. That's Angie refereeing in the middle in the pink shirt. And uh, that's a fun activity for a couple of hours. And when they get hot, they come in and drink and get a book and watch a movie for a little bit. Go back out and play some more. Trash get all pretty cheap. This one is probably the most fun that we do. Um, when I did this live, we demonstrated so everybody got to play. And I'm sorry you all are on a webinar so you can't actually play. But this is Hungry Hungry Hippos Life Size. You'll notice that we took a garden hose, made a circle in the middle of the floor. We bought those little plastic balls at Walmart. Very cheap. You'll notice the kid with a laundry basket on his head. <laughs> a furniture roller that has a cotton rope to it. They divide it into teams. You're just looking at one end of the of the room, and they, under their own power, wheel themselves out to the middle under a timer, one from each end, and they scoop up however many balls they can in the laundry basket, and then the teammates pull them back. Everybody knows how hungry, hungry hippo goes. This works in the street. It works upstairs. Um, most anywhere that you can. Do the laundry baskets. The kids love this one. They have to be careful they don't run over their fingers. You have to caution them before that. The furniture movers are cheap. We made those. Um, plywood with the most expensive thing were the wheels. We bought four wheels for each one of them. Put a piece of carpet on the end and tied a cotton rope to them. Laundry baskets are small, the ones we picked up at the dollar store. That game probably cost about $10. And when it rains, can we go out and play? They really, really like them. Life size hungry and great hippos. The older kids, this is one of our teenagers. She didn't want to lay down on the board, so she scooted on her backside with a basket on her head. And then, of course, the parents wanted to get in on it. So, mm -hmm. and it was not nearly as easy as they thought it was going to be. Uh, <laughs> so that's one of my board members, actually, in the black shirt. He was really into it. The, the basket was so it's kind of a trick. It's not as much fun as, you, as easy as you think it's going to be. But the, the life-size Hungry Hungry Hippos is probably one of our mm -hmm. more successful life-size games. Yeah. And it looks like you have a, a pre – is that a um, meeting room in the li at the library where you do this in, or is this somewhere where you push us apart the furniture? That's our space? art gallery up there. Ah, uh, okay. So we've got about, about 2,200 square feet. The artwork on the walls uh, is all done by local artists. Mm -hmm. I have since redone this room. These slides were made uh, this spring. I got to – paint and put new flooring down, those sorts of things, but we will still do these activities upstairs. But yeah, it's a great space. We're very lucky to have it. Nice, yeah. This is the beginning of Candyland. Everybody's familiar with the Candyland game. So we let our middle schoolers, our tweens if you will, decorate the street on the Candyland board. We gave them sidewalk chalk, which we had had donated, and the kids took off, and they went out in the street and made a Candyland board. You can see the colored spaces all the way around. Again, the bookmobile at one end, cones and barrels at the other. Some of our participants are pretty small, if you will notice. Um, there's the spinner that he's got his hand on, and they played, I don't know, they spent, seems like two hours out playing Candyland. It was a long morning, but they enjoyed it thoroughly. Again, Cheap, inexpensive, 
something they won't forget. Let's go to the library. Let's play game. And I see this is something that's on the street, and I can see in the far back corner there's a cone. So this is something that you said the mayor is very supportive. They just block off the street for the amount of time that you'd be doing the the program. Yes, and we have nice. actually have a wonderful relationship with our county judge executive and our local mayor for our city. Uh, if you'll notice in the back, some apartments you see some light blue and some brick. That's senior housing. And we're a lot of entertainment for those folks. They come over and, and they play bingo with us, but they come out and watch everything that we're doing. If they don't participate, we at least provide entertainment for them. <laughs> 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 True. Yeah, that's that's something probably Larry never thought about. Is here's we are come and watch what would yeah just be a be one of our audience members. <laughs> and they they have lots of suggestions and, and they're a hysterical bunch. They they really get into the particularly when the kids get out and start playing. We have had bounce houses out here in the streets with water, you know, and all the bouncing and the sliding and all that sort of stuff. And we've had some seniors join us for that. And we're like, oh, gosh, watch a hip. But they have a great time. Because <laughs> it is a lot of fun. They're not really sure what we're going to do next. They've, everyone knows Angie. She's been in the school system for 17 years. So she is my true treasure. Because Angie can call and say, we're going to do this. And they're like, okay, how can we help? And that's the most amazing part. You've got to have community support. And not necessarily monetarily. That's great, too. We can call our local subway and say, hey, we need a sandwich platter. We're going to entertain some folks. And more likely than not, they donate those to us. So I can't stress enough the importance of community relationships, partnerships, if you will. We work very closely with our Family Resource Center. We call them Friskies in Kentucky. I don't know what they are across the United States. But they always have great ideas. They're always looking for numbers, to put it on a very practical director level. Um, headcount and numbers, and so they're always great to help. Um, they have a lot of grants that we have been able to share in as far as programming and different events, and we've had some early childhood type grants and those sorts of things as well. So partner up with your family resource centers if you are not. Same thing with your extension group, if you have uh, ag extension services in your county. Mm -hmm. Use those folks because they're always looking for programming ideas and are super willing to help. During our summer reading program, this year, we were fortunate enough to have Home Depot partner with us. They provided their kits. They had a birdhouse and a wheelbarrow and a bug house and a couple of other things that they brought and sent staff members, sent their employees down to help build and instruct and explain about building and the different tools and things that they would use. We did that for our little ones and our kids under 15, and then we had our extension office partnered with us, and we built better meals. And they did some layered salads and some fun stuff like that. So always look at ways that you can partner with community organizations to stretch your budget. Lean, lean on their budget a little if you can. Mm -hmm. But it makes an incredible involved experience for the patrons. This also was upstairs. We did this for more for our adult patrons. We set up a nine-hole golf course. Now that picture of the room doesn't look that big, but again, 2,200 square feet, you can set up nine holes. And you'll see, we went on the cheap. We had the two flowers donated. The flowers were donated by our local nursery. And we used pool noodles to make bank shots. And we ordered a kit. Um, Oriental Trade, I think, is where we got the kit for the different holes. You'll notice the yellow. There's a curve and a, a hole and a green ramp and some little cones and things like that. And the rest of it we just made here. And we played golf upstairs. Um, we actually had a fundraiser going on downstairs, and while you were waiting to have your bail money paid, you could come upstairs and play golf. So there's a couple of jailbirds upstairs <laughs> playing. Um, <clears throat> I love the flowers, the the you know the the greenery that was put there as well. To <laughs> now we're, we're trying to create our own amen corner. It's not exactly Augusta, but we did get the flowers out. <laughs> We were, we were trying anyway, uh, but that was very popular. And then the kids came up uh, afternoon after we got the jail over with, but um, it was it was a lot of fun and very different. You didn't really think you were going to be playing golf in the public library. Mm -hmm. Okay, this obviously is outside our library, but we hosted a car show and a concert. Yeah. This was a cruise-in. It was not actually a show. Um, car aficionados will know the difference between a cruise-in and a show. 
but they did by popular vote, you know, pick a favorite and that sort of thing. But uh, again, get the older folks in. Um, our senior population came out and danced in the street. Um, we had lots of music going. Again, a different event that you don't think of associated with the library. Plus, it's very little. I think I paid forty dollars to have dash plaques made, which are little things that they put as they show their cars. Uh, and they just said something very simple: Fall Festival, McLean County Public Library, um, and the dates. But we had a good turnout for that. People wandered up and down. We actually sold. We set up. Um, or if, uh, what do you want to call it? We sold baked potatoes and taco salads and we had bottles of water. Our friends group made some made some money with a concession stand to help offset the cost of the plaques. But that is also a very low cost because the folks bring the bring the entertainment when they bring their cars. People always want to see old cars, old Detroit. They want to mm -hmm. they want to do that. This is. This, believe it or not, is our local physician. We had Doc Wilhite come in. He plays banjo like a fiend. He sings hysterically crazy songs. And we, again, do this in the library. We do it at 6 o'clock. We close at 6 o'clock, so we start the music at 6, and people want to hang around. And we have some folks get up and dance and all those sorts of things. Um, didn't cost us a thing. Doc said, sure, I'd be glad to come down and, and sing and play and Again, get people that we would have never had in the library before. They think, oh, I don't read, I don't like books, or whatever. But everybody likes music. Mm -hmm. And everybody loves Doc because he's a nut. And <laughs> this is a great way to get people exposed to the library. And people sometimes have, I don't want to say a phobia, but a fear or a apprehension about going in the library. You know, there's something about the library. These sorts of activities, they reach out to those folks and bring them in. It's something completely unexpected. Doesn't cost anything. Our seniors are on a limited budget, of course, the ones particularly in the housing right here beside us. And they can walk over, they can, you know, ride their scooters over and they're entertained for an hour, hour and fifteen minutes. We usually have some kind of refreshment to go with it. It has been donated, it can be as easy as Oreo cookies and a bottle of water and they're tickle. Mm -hmm. But again, it's a way to get folks that you don't necessarily or normally you don't normally think of as a patron of the library. This is something we started new this year. You'll notice the bucket at this young man's feet, Yard C. It's meant to be played outside. He allowed how it was too hot to go outside and play, so he wanted to do it inside. <laughs> <laughs> this we check these out as a kit. Uh we do some passive programming if you will. Um have three or four different kits. We have a, a battleship that we play out in the street, the kids become the battleships, you know, they stand together and yell back and forth over a, a curtain. Um, just kind of a, a different approach, but the, the yard seat games, they actually check these out and take them home. We have some of the items in our maker spaces, some kits, uh, making bracelets, making sun catchers, um, a couple of different activities like that where they actually check them out, take them home, do the activity, bring them back, we refurbish them. I see Angie has released a question. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Angie said during the the concert and car show that it ended a very long day. That during the day you had three hundred school students there to participate in Johnny Appleseed Day. Ah, yes, I had forgotten that was Johnny Appleseed Day. <laughs> that was the same day, and then the following up was. <laughs> we coordinate with our schools. There's an elementary school here in our town, and there's an elementary school in Calhoun, which is the county seat, which is about. 15 miles, and then Sacramento, which is, I guess, about 20 miles from the library, 25 cross country. Um, and we coordinate with those schools to have Johnny Appleseed Day. I have a gentleman that comes with an antique apple press, and he makes apple cider out on the front porch and talks about the apple trees and how Johnny Appleseed planted trees across the United States. And we have games upstairs and books upstairs that we read and activities. So it's a pretty long day by the time you get that many elementary <laughs> in and out and pin the apple on the tree and <laughs> read a few stories and those sorts of things. It's a long day and yes, she's right, we did have the car show after that activity. And it was a pretty good day. We actually raised the money in the day instead of spending our hard earned capital. <laughs> nice. The yard like I said, these these types of games and kits that we check out to the folks, they take them home. 
uh, they have a week checkout, and they bring them back. A lot of them we find checkout on Friday, and they bring them back on Monday. They don't keep them. They won't play over the weekend. So mm -hmm. we're lucky. Angie's, Angie's husband is very crafty, as is Angie, and they make a lot of these things, uh, the wooden dice and those sorts of things. So it's it's cool for me. Mm -hmm. And she said the cost for this whole one was five dollars for the yardsy. Right, <laughs> for the yardsy. Yeah. I have I have tons of white buckets courtesy of my horses, so I have lots of buckets mm -hmm. sitting around. We we rest out the pieces of wood. So this was a fun day. We had a touch a truck day. Angie started very early calling different businesses. This is a coal mine buggy. Um, we have recently, we're opening our second active coal mine in the county. Um, oh. it's, an under, it's an underground mine. Um, and this is a man carrier, how they load up and ride down the shaft and then back to where they're actually placed mining. But the, you see the gentleman standing in the back with the orange uh, on their coveralls. They talked with the kids and explained what they did, how they did it, how this little vehicle worked. Um, we had, I think, 18 different vehicles this year from National Guard to a coal mine to a tractor with a hay baler and a fork on the front, um, ambulance, police, state troopers. We, we call everybody we can think of that had anything that had wheels on it. Again, we're a very small town, so farmers are, of course, our biggest asset. Um, we're working on a combine. The guy wouldn't bring one that far from the from the dealership. It would take a few <laughs> days to get it. But uh, they open them up and let the kids, as you see, the kids, they're on them, crawling around and under them and around them. I looked at one point and I wish I had put that picture in. I had these same little girls. They were all sitting in the bucket of the tractor. It had a bucket on the front. And they were all lined up. It was a cool day, as you can tell. They all on sweaters. But uh, this event, again, you're out at lunch. We provide lunch for the folks that bring the vehicles. And it, it's like from 10 to 1. We don't do it all day long. We focus when the kids are in school, usually on a Friday, so they mm -hmm. can walk down from the elementary school and, and get the numbers. And then it, if they get home, sometimes we run it a little bit late. So the early kids can go home, then their parents can come back. We have a lot of adults. The seniors are out. We have a Ford dealership in the county, and they brought us a jazzy Mustang and a super-duper pickup truck. And, of course, the parents are really interested in those, <laughs> crawling through those. And the, the, the folks are just really good to donate their time and their materials for the events that we do here. Um, the National Guard unit is in the next county. But they love it when Angie calls. Can we bring you a helicopter? I mean, they are always <laughs> very, very awesome. proactive in anything they can do to help. And these gentlemen, actually, the one in the middle is their PR and safety guy. And for the coal mine, I told you we have, as you can tell by looking at the brick building behind, that's a very old building that's behind us. Ours is older. And we have a basement that is dirt floor. They're going to come uh, next week, and we're having a coal mine experience in the basement. Hmm. So. They're going to show what it would be like to be in a coal mine by being in our basement, <laughs> which is kind of a frightening thought. But uh, it's probably be, the closest, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it'll be a great interactive event for the kids. We've done dinosaur digs. Um, we made the eggs, you know, with the sand and the flour and mess and put the little plastic dinosaurs in them and buried those in the basement so the kids can dig them up. Mm -hmm. That was a great event, too. So we will do that again in the next couple of weeks. But. Touch a truck is great because you can get your community involved. Uh, like I said, you're out lunch for the folks that bring vehicles if you choose to. But the kids, I remember I was here for this. I was here for that. And that's what we're doing. We're creating memories and, and good feelings so that when they're ancient like me, they will want to come to the library and understand the library and they'll bring their children to the library because we've had to grow our patron base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're mm -hmm. new. and mm -hmm. Brand new. You know, the schools, libraries, um, in a former life, I taught school in one of the elementary schools, and the last time I went in the elementary school library, the books were the same when I was there 20 years ago. <laughs> and that's sad. So we're new and we're different. We're growing a library culture. Um, I always tell the story. When, when we started, we were arranged differently downstairs, and my computers were all against an outside wall, and everybody had headphones because they all were into the latest, greatest sound and music. I'd had a meeting upstairs, the county judge executive was there and some of the magistrates and we had walked out on the sidewalk and they were all looking in at the library and one little boy was sitting at one of the computers with his headphones on and he was just jamming. He was chair dancing like crazy and wiggling and carrying on <laughs> and singing. And the county judge looked in and he looked at me and he said, you know, whatever it has cost 
and as aggravated and as hateful phone calls as I have had, he said it is worth every dime for that. And he's exactly right. Mm -hmm. If we make it just one child, then we've done our job. But we're reaching out to all of the children in the county. This slide um, was the end of our event day that we had, and Angie told them that the director did not know that they were going to draw on the side of the building. So again, they took some chalk and they traced each other down the, the length of the side of my building, and then they decorated themselves. And we were going to do it with a water hose, and it was not a good enough day to, to do the water hose outline on the brick building. But to this day, I still have these uh, cherubs on the side of my building. But they think it's grandson when Angie tells them I don't know anything about it. And they <laughs> right on the sidewalk down the street, and they have a ball. So again, those are things. I had a little boy get hurt a couple of summers ago down at the river. We're about a block off of the Green River down here in the Rough River. Um, he had cut his foot, and he came in just all upset and crying and, and you know scared and everything else. And he came to us because he didn't know where else to go when he was hurt. Hmm. That again. He says volumes. He said, well, I knew you all would take care of me. Oh. You know, that's what we're after. <laughs> yeah, we're going to take care of you in lots of ways, not just physically, but, you know, in many, many ways. That's the kind of relationship we are trying to build with our kids. So when they are adults, they'll bring their kids, and their kids will bring their kids. We will, we will be here mm -hmm. for them in many, many, many ways. Good. And um, Angie, Angie is talking about someone that he says someone is very great that you rest him every year for our friend's jail fundraiser. Yeah. Where is the we sheriff? Have, him up? <laughs> yeah, we have the, our sheriff. This is our building. Um, like I said, it was built in the late 1800s. Uh, it's handmade brick, it's very soft. But we have about 6,500 square feet in the building. Uh, collections got about 24,000 24, books and movies and that sort of thing in it. We do a fundraiser every year. Um, our friends group, we have a jail. Some of y'all are, are familiar with that. We create a list of folks that we want to arrest. Our county judge is always at the top of the list. That's what she's talking about. Yeah, yeah the judge. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we send the sheriff. He gets in on the game too, sheriff and a couple of deputies, and they will go to the school, the courthouse, whomever, some self-surrender. We, you know, we say, okay, you've been arrested. Here's your bail. You need to raise this much money. And we won't let you out until you get the money raised. Uh, the first year we did it, we raised about $7,500. I'd like to have you $7,500. $7, For one afternoon in a town as small as we are, that's pretty impressive. We did it the next year, and we raised uh, about the same amount, about 7000 And we skipped a year just to kind of give everybody a rest and from being arrested. We have some folks that really get into it. They'll put on costumes. They put on, you know, the, the black and white stripes and caps and wear a number around their neck. We make a door. Um, Angie, Angie's husband has made a jail cell door out of plastic water pipe, and we hang it in our doorway, and it looks just like a, a jail cell. But then we feed them breakfast if they're here at the 7 o'clock in the morning session because mm -hmm. the farmers like to come be arrested early. And then we feed them uh, barbecue at lunch if they stick around as long. And usually the school bunch wants to hang for lunch because they really like our barbecue. <laughs> but again, it is, it's a tremendous fundraiser. And it, like I said, it doesn't cost us a thing. And, and we do extremely well as far as fundraising for our friends group to, to help the library, of course. Um, we've done various fundraisers. I know there's a library in the adjoining county that has done the Flamingo sale. And we've talked about doing one of those as well. But since they're close, we probably won't steal their idea. Mm -hmm. But everyone seems to have a good time. They enjoy it. Um, and again, spreads goodwill. When you're new, some of you may be newer than I, but six years is a pretty young library. Mm -hmm. And they, like, they're not sure what we're going to do next. So <laughs> we're always going to try something new and, and something different. Our, our next deal will be the coal mine in the basement, of course, and then a dinosaur dig um, with our kids that do story times with us. And and our twins as well. Mm -hmm. Hi. That's fast and furious, but that's pretty much the end of it. Like I said, I, I didn't do nearly as well as I would have done with my buddy, but she's written in a couple of <laughs> Italian twins. No. Oh. Um, we do have a question. Um, how much is the average bail for your inmates? What do you well, depending. We, always set, we set the county judge at about 500 Uh mm -hmm. School teachers and some other folks. I think 200 is as low as we've gone, so somewhere between two and 500. 
And so people can pay a little bit at a time until they've until you've gotten enough for someone to get out. One of our uh, folks from the school, her husband brought down a sack of pennies. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to stay there a little longer. We have folks. Who, most of our folks in our county judge is no exception. He gets all of his money donated before he even comes in. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, sure. We had we had one gentleman that stayed. I thought he was going to stay here all night. He kept calling his. He was actually a preacher. <laughs> He kept calling his folks, and none of his parishioners would, would bail him out of jail. I didn't know what that said exactly. But, uh, thought he yeah, was like, oh. what's going on in that church? <laughs> so this, you said you're, you're new. Your building, your library is new. Um, and this building, you said, is from the 1800s. What was it before the library was in there? It was many things. Uh, it originally... Well, not originally. I don't know what it, the exact original purpose. If you look at the building, you can see it's two halves. Uh huh. Yeah. The, the mm -hmm. It was it was the first brick building built in the town of Livermore, and about halfway through, they decided it's going to need to be bigger, so they built the other side. I'm actually speaking to you from the last window on the left side is my office, but mm -hmm. uh, it has been a dry goods store. It had apartments in it at one time. It was a telephone exchange. It was a post office. Oh. It was a TV repair shop. Um, it's been it's been lots of different mm -hmm. incarnations. And we have a, a lady here in town that has done a photographic history. I guess is the best way to describe it. And I don't know how many pictures she has of our building in those different incarnations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, there, there there were you know the side the steps came down from a different side. There's steps on the side of the building that you can't see. And there was a wooden sidewalk. There was no sidewalk. There was dirt. There were trees. I mean, it, it's interesting. To see it from 1889, I think is when it was originally built. So it looks like it's, it's in pretty good shape for being that old too. Obviously, being kept up over the years pretty well. It is. Uh, it scares me a little bit to go in the basement and look up. But <laughs> I try not. To. Well, maybe it does need a little work. <laughs> the basement's pretty scary. Uh, a tornado came through town and took the roof off in 2009, and okay. they. They refurbed to put a new back wall on it and uh, mm -hmm. put, of course, a new roof on it. But other than that, that it's original back to that long ago. Now, the windows are replacement windows. They're new. But, uh, sure. You know, of course, the Women's Club of Livermore, I think a lot of the libraries across the state of Kentucky were founded by local women's clubs, um, the GFWC, if you will, now. Um, they started a library, it kept it as a community library. It used to be known as the Livermore Community Library. And, you know, if, mm -hmm. if Susie could keep it open two hours or Sally could come in for three hours or, you know, and that's how they kept it open. And the books were donated. We had a mayor back in the 70s and 80s in this town that was very pro-library and she tried really, 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 really hard to get a taxing district created and those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And she never could make it happen. And she had books donated. There were uh, there was a troop of Boy Scouts in Delaware that heard about Amber and her drive to get a library in this community, and they brought a U-Haul trailer. Oh wow! Full, full <laughs> of donated books all the way from Delaware, mm -hmm. and they brought them in, and all of the ladies in the women's club helped write spine labels by hand and did all these things and shelved all those books and. When we started five years ago, I had handwritten spine libels, and today, of course, we're all automated and barcoded and all those wonderful things. But uh, awesome! It was a neat project to to build a library. Is something new. I have a neat sister library program in the state of Kentucky, and I have a sister library in Campbell County, which is one of our larger counties. Uh, so you're the only library. So you said this is originally it was a Livermore Community Library, but now it's the county library. So that changed. Yes, That's we created point. a taxing district in, okay. in 2009. So you're the only library in your county then? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I put up little free libraries, you know, the little boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. I have yep. those here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Throughout the county, I have, I think, five of them out that we fill and rotate stock and that sort of thing in and out of those. And those seem very popular, particularly Folks may not be able to reach us during our hours. We are open, I think, 52 hours a week, and we run the bookmobile every other week. But mm -hmm. if they miss it, then they can hit the little free libraries. And those mm -hmm. are pretty neat. That's that's awesome. Yeah, you gotta you gotta do what you can to get out to everybody. Yeah. Um, 
did you was I, I was trying to look on a map I looked on a map to see did, and I looked on your Facebook page did you guys get the eclipse it was did it reach where you were you seem to be kind of near we were the, about the line 98, 98 99 percent totality it didn't oh, get nice. pitch dark but the cicadas and the crickets started hollering and the street lights came on security lights and things like that but mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't completely dark, but we all ran out with our glasses and watched. <laughs> did you do it? Did you do any sort of program at the library for that, or was it just the whole town was do was? Just the whole town. The schools had things going on in the in the schools, so mm -hmm. we gave out some glasses that we had ordered, and mm -hmm. everybody, was, everybody was traveling and going. It was 100% in Madisonville, which is about 25, 30 miles from us, and so. Oh. Everybody was going that direction to see it since they were that close. Mm -hmm. But we did have some folks that were interesting on the river. I, I have a library dog, so I had taken him for a walk after the thing started moving. And they were from, I want to say they were from Michigan. Her brother worked at the observatory in Livermore, California. So uh -huh. they wanted to come to Livermore, Kentucky to watch the eclipse. Uh, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'll find in Livermore, Kentucky. It's just that, yeah. Not the same, but yeah, it's a sister city. <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably ran you short, but that's anybody that's any more fun. questions or comments? Um, or? if anybody has, does anybody have any questions um, that you want to ask of um, Amy or Angie, who's on the line, you know, typing to us? Um, type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface if you want to ask about any of the other um, programs and things that they were doing. I actually did look at, you would said you'd redone the floor in the upstairs, and I think I saw that on the um, your Facebook page. There, the, the new floor is like a wood, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, a laminate and painted and brightened, brightened that space up. Um, that's the, the largest meeting room in the county <laughs> is in my library. Oh, really? Okay. So, we have had, so you get used we've had a lot for that. We had political forums, uh, company meetings. Uh, we had a company that was trying out some new software, and they wanted to come where they could all, you know, be in one spot to do it. So we have smart boards and Wi-Fi and all those good things. So they mm -hmm. came here to do their training. We've done a lot of different community events in our room, so it needed to spiffing up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it looks. But nice. yeah, I do our our Facebook page, and Angie has a an outreach Facebook page as well. So. Visit and like us. Mm -hmm. We presented this webinar in Fargo at the ARSL, the uh, Association right. of Rural and Small Organizations Conference mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. Are you we, all going to that? No. Um, I'm not attending this year. No, I have previously, but not this particular year. But we do always promote it and support them, yes. <laughs> um, we right. do have a question that came in about the car show. Um, we had the people bringing the cars in there. Um, do you. Ch um, is that also a fundraiser? Do you charge people to bring their cars to the car show? Or is it just an event? How does that work? We did not. We did that to get people down to see the band. We had paid for a a boy that has local ties with a southern rock type band. And we got him an audience, and we did not charge for the cruise in. Um, mm -hmm. More of a good sort of thing. We, we had the concession stand, though, and we made about $650 on the concession stand. So that was run by the library, by you guys at the library. Yeah. Okay. Right. And people that have show cars like that, they always want to show them. It's tricky, you know, to find a date True. that they're not already committed because they oh, will go yeah. far and yawn to, to show them. But if you can get a date that's good, then hang on to it. Yeah, because they're yeah they do they just they just want to show off and and talk about what they've done to their particular cars and see other and to see other people's I'm sure. <laughs> oh yeah, the, it, that's a whole brotherhood that does the the cars, particularly the the older the Fords, you know, the muscle cars, those sorts of things. That's a, it, it's basically the same group everywhere you go if you if you follow their shows, but they have a ball. And again, that may not be a group that you would normally attract. So something mm -hmm. you do at the library. We do we do family movies. We've done movies on the outside of the building. We had 300 people in the street watching the Lego movie <laughs> on the side of a brick building. Think about it. It was pretty wow. clever. 
Oh yes, bricks get yes. It was we <laughs> see the movie. Oh yes, if the if it's flat enough, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It would have probably been completely smooth if you hung a sheet or something, you know. But the kids loved it. Oh yeah, brick. They thought it was the grandest thing. But <laughs> again, got people that you normally would not attract with mm-hmm. just saying we're all hungry. So. We think completely out of the box, do really weird and different things. My father is always constantly amazed. You're doing what at the library? But. <laughs> exactly, and I, I think it's, it goes back to what you said at the very beginning of your um, talk that try, wanting to be the the, the center of the, the community center, the the center of et- activities for what goes on in the town. That you just think of anything that the, your town may want to have done as an event or an activity jump in and offer to do it figure out a way to, yeah. to do that and then just the people will come to it because of whatever the activity is and they'll have that same reaction the library did this well yeah. <laughs> exactly um, we have put together some kits uh, I didn't have a picture of them of for geocaching mm-hmm. some of y'all are probably familiar with, with that idea uh, we've mm-hmm. done that kit that's not a checkout kit we've got one we are if you look in the Guinness Book of World Records, thank you very much, Livermore, Kentucky is mentioned oh. because it is the only place in the United States that with the foot of the bridge, you're in McLean County. In the middle of the bridge, you've crossed one river, you've crossed another county, you're getting ready to cross another river, and yet when you get to the foot of the bridge, you're still in McLean County. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. actually, yeah. you know, look it up. It's the confluence of the rough and the green river, and it's right here outside my library. I can see the bridge uh, mm-hmm. from my window. So, of course, fishing is an act here. Everybody fishes up and down the river, so we put together a, a backpack-type kit that has a fishing pole and, you know, a temporary license. If you're a kid, of course, you don't have to have a fishing license mm-hmm. in Kentucky. And, you know, those sorts of things. Uh, we do ice. We have an ice skating arena in Owensboro, Kentucky, which is 17 miles from us. And we, they will donate free passes to us so our kids can go out and ice skate. We did that as part of our summer reading last year. We took them all ice skating. Mm-hmm. But just different things. A lot of, we bring the Animal Tales shows in. Those are not cheap. Um, mm-hmm. The gentlemen, they do animal education. They bring in kangaroos and snakes and, you know, wombats mm-hmm. and anything else they can bring in. Because mm-hmm. kids won't get a chance around here to see a kangaroo. No. Mm-hmm. Not you're not going to. You're not going to see. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we do have a question. Actually, I think you're just mentioning a little bit about that. Um, someone is asking. Besides games, have you tried lending out any things other than books? And you did just mention the fi- the fishing. Fishing, uh, the geocaching. Um, brain dead. Just went completely dead. Uh, we've not tried the instruments. We had thought about instruments. Um, mm. Mm-hmm. Because we have a lot of musical talent around here, but we've not had any donations, honestly, and we need some more donations in order to to do that program. But the a backpacking or a bird watching kit is one we put a guide in, um, you know, the local birds mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. who they are and what they are, and some tree identification. You know, this is poison ivy. Don't hold on to it, sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> sure. If you're gonna go out and look for those birds and go fishing, you do need to know that. Yes. Um, oh, Angie says you also have backpacks with tennis equipment. Yes, we have a tennis. We have two tennis courts here in town. Um, it has tennis racket and balls and the USTA rules, which I don't think anybody ever reads, but they're in a, <laughs> a backpack. And we have just the town has just installed a disc golf course, a nine-hole disc golf. I don't know if y'all oh. are in that. But Mm-hmm. That's great in popularity. We got books all over everywhere, so that's our next kit to get put together is for mm-hmm. disc golf. Yeah, I have friends here that play that. Yeah, it's basically like golf with a frisbee. <laughs> yeah, it's fascinating. Um, it, I can see where you could get hooked very easily, and it's a whole lot cheaper than that bag and clubs and balls and tees and. Oh that. sure, <laughs> <laughs> and a lot probably for you guys a lot easier to check out something like that than than actual a set of golf clubs. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Well, any no other questions? Yeah. Oh, wait. Here we go. I so see. You gotta wait till people, gotta give people time to type sometimes. Um, 
someone just said they, they they love the Hungry Hippos game. That 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 was awesome. So just a comment about that one, which I thought was really fun too. <laughs> um, oh, and she says that you have a lot of STEM kits as well that the schools check out through you. Yes, Angie worked very diligently. I forgot about the STEM kits. She'll bash me for that when I get down to years. <laughs> um, different ki little things that they can build. I know the one for the elementary kids was how to save Fred. And Fred was a, a worm, and you had to build like a life preserver and building bridges. There's lots of different, all sorts of little activities that she has put together in kits that we do check out to the schools. And those are very successful. Of course, you know, STEM and theme both. Mm -hmm. um, we have those are kits. And we have two areas set up in our library. One for the smaller children, we have a little alcove, I guess is the best way to say, under the steps. And we put the smaller children in that area with more passive type things that they can build and, and all sorts of supplies, you know, tongue depressors and Q-tips and sometimes I get a shopping list from Angie and I go, what is this for? You know, <laughs> <laughs> they go, we go in her kit and then the older children, we have another area towards the back of the library that we set aside for some older projects. And it's, it's amazing what they will come up with when they start building. We have a little mm -hmm. box of magnets and it's fascinating. But so those kits are always, and they're, they're not expensive. Again, I cannot reiterate enough mm -hmm. that we do not have much of a budget by the time you pay heating and air on a building this size um, that leaks like a sieve, I might add. We do have replacement windows, but it's an ancient building. Mm -hmm. My power bill this month was, you know, like $1,000, which was shocking to me, but um, in a town that's small, and we're on KU, which is cheap power. But anyway. The supplies are, are basically cheap. You can buy, you know, a gross ton of tongue depressors and Q-tips and cotton balls and little magnets and those sorts of things and let the kids let the kids use their imagination. That's mm -hmm. part of what I see liking. They don't create. And the STEM kits, STEAM kits, and just our maker areas give them a chance to use their brain, use their head for something, something other than to hang a hat on. Mm -hmm. So... And Angie says, most of them cost less than $10. If you're like us, clean out your closets or your junk drawers, and kids will, like you just saying, kids will figure out what to do with them. And she recommends that Pinterest is great for suggestions. Just tweak them for your own activity. Yes. Yeah, look yes, for an activity all... that someone else is doing and then figure out, well, what do we have that we can do just with different materials? Right. And we have used some pretty strange things. So I've got lots of Shoe boxes. Uh, if any of y'all use Schwann's or order any food that comes in those nice, hard, little, heavy cardboard boxes that aren't extremely large, they make great mm -hmm. things to put the kids in that check out. And mm -hmm. yeah. And she said too that the STEM, STEM kits are checked out through the schools. So you have an agreement that the schools um, actually check them out from you to use in their in their classrooms. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. have a. That's a nice. Look, we have an elementary partnership. Yeah, our elementary school here in our town um, is, of course, and we work very heavily with our Head Start and preschool programs as well. We have one middle school and one high school in the county and three elementary schools. So hook up, if you will. She spends all day on the bookmobile at one of the elementary schools on Mondays. Mm -hmm. She's there all day. They check out books. They do activities. And that's, you know, K through fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And she has all those kids on the bookmobile. Sometimes she gets quite sick. but she gets seasick. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they kind of rock and roll and carry on, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's key to get partners with your schools and mm -hmm. local community officials. Uh, can't stress the community ties strongly enough. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so, anybody have any last? We have one last question here that come that came in because it's almost getting to eleven o'clock. I think we'll um, wrap it up with this one here. Um, someone wants to know, and this is a good question, I think, to wrap up with. Um, what do you think is special about your town specifically, and how does the library fit in with that? Or well, especially unique about your town. Uh, special and unique, uh, <laughs> everything. Um, <laughs> it is. At one time, this was a very uh, prosperous, thriving community. Uh, it had right at 2,500 people in it. A lot of furniture industry here. They floated ah. the logs down the river and made a lot of furniture. Some of you may remember the famous barrel furniture in the 70s that was mm -hmm. uh, with the girls. Yeah, that was all made here in Livermore. Oh, nice. My mm -hmm. 
my grandfather owned a furniture factory, and he made a lot of things for top value stamps, which you used to redeem stamps, and there were a couple of things that he made specifically for that. But as the industry went away, so did the people. Mm. It went from 2,500 to just barely 1,000. It's very close-knit. It is heavy agriculture. We rank fifth in the state in ag receipts, mm. which means no. we have a lot of chickens and a lot of grain, soybeans and corn, uh, some wheat. Mm-hmm. So we're a very small rural agricultural-based community that the world has kind of passed by. It's sort of like stepping back about 50 years, hmm. maybe 60. Um, and many I'm people like here. that, yeah. It's, it's very quiet. It's very quaint, if you will, uh, quiet mm-hmm. most of the time. Um, and I think they were hungry for something. I don't mm-hmm. think they knew what they were hungry for. But, you know, there, there needs to be an activity. We are not in the county seat, which was a huge unhappy point when we opened the library we need to move to the county seat well the building is here the books are here and we're here now so no we're not moving to Calhoun I mean mm-hmm. the greatest need is here in Livermore because the schools um, the elementary school the high school the middle school are all in the county seat of course in Calhoun mm-hmm. which is more centrally located probably like I said we look like a pork chop and we're in the bottom right hand corner of the pork chop and uh, if you put the bone at the top mm-hmm. so I, I think our ability to offer such a wide variety of programming, events, ideas, concepts, totally foreign. Because, again, you're thinking, okay, this is 50 years ago. A library was a place that had books. Mm-hmm. You could go read the newspaper and the magazine and check out a book and then move on. There wasn't a whole lot of stuff going on. And I think we've kind of changed that perspective, particularly in our county. I have a lot of folks... Um, that would drive to Davis County, which is, like I said, the county north of us, about 17 miles, pay $40 for a library card. And then they came here and they said, you have the same things. You have the same databases. You have the same amount of books. If you don't have a particular title, you can get it. You're in a library alone. So let's quit paying for that. Let's support you guys. And it's nice to see them go, hey, we can do this at home and get the same effect, the same benefits here. So I think awesome. recognizing what, what we have here in town and the, the, our patron base mm-hmm. is key to knowing what we need to offer. Sure. Um, yeah, Angie says, uh, she said, everyone knows everything, and then she laughs, so <laughs> <That's> <laughs> True. typical of small town, yeah. Um, but then she says the things uh, we can call for volunteers because we know the majority of our citizens. If we are in need of water for our water slides, our neighbors let us hook into their water. If you're cleaning up after an event, they are there to help. Um, oh, and then he mentioned, she mentioned, ah, she just mentions, the greatest thing is when a gentleman just walks in the door and gives you a $1,000 check and says, y'all are doing great things, keep it up. And she says this gentleman comes in every year and does that for you? Yes, he does. I look, I look <laughs> for that white truck every day. <laughs> <laughs> that's... that's that's part of the small town that everyone knows everything and everyone, yeah. And I think that's great that you guys are revitalizing what's going on with the community. That's that's what libraries are for, definitely. Exactly. That's what that's what we're here to prove. Like I said in the beginning, you know, we want it to be the community center, and if it's not happening at the library, then it's not happening. You know, that's like you said, that kids. Can, there's nowhere else for them to go for these things any, as well. And you, you, have the, you have the biggest meeting room in the county for people to use for things. So, yeah. it, it was hard to get them to believe that we needed a county library, but it didn't take that long once we got rolling mm-hmm. for them to go, hey, let's go. And so when a, when a child looks at you and says, if it's not going on here, then it's not going on. Again, that's, rewarding. Yeah, that's, that's an awesome quote. That's Yeah. <laughs> How we do what we do everywhere. Mm-hmm. Great. Yep. All right. Um, that's great. I think that's a great way to wrap it up. If it's not happening at the library, it's not happening. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we're just a little after 11 o'clock, so this is a perfect time to wrap up for our full hour. Very good. Very yeah. good. Thank well, you. I appreciate the opportunity, Kristen. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Amy. This is great seeing what you guys are doing there. Um, so many awesome ideas that are um, unique to what you're doing, but it's great to see that because um, you know I've seen other you know bigger libraries do more you know 
comp and a more expensive version of the same things and it's just great to see the more I mean I, I just love the having the kids make the candy land and just so this this more simpler um, displays of the of the games and things so they can use their imagination more I think that's that's awesome I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Amy. Thank you, Angie, for being on um, as well as you could there while you're down working working the desk. <laughs> it's yeah. great to have you. Um, so I think that will wrap it up for uh, this week's Encompass Live. But I'm going to pull presenter control to my computer, and I'm going to show you. I do have here. Um, there we go. Um, your library's um, Facebook page there. Yep, that's it. Uh, looking nice with the plants. And then here's the new floor that you have in the meeting yep. room, I believe. That's it, yep. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you're interested in more of what they're doing and want to talk to Amy or um, Angie more about it, um, the Facebook page would be a good way to reach out to you. Absolutely. That's yeah. perfect. And there's our phone number right there on our stuff and normal phone number we're having Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. All right. So um, I gave them a like, of course. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> That will wrap it up for today's the show then. Thank you, Amy and Angie. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, I'm going to pop that over to our um, Encompass Live page here. Um, the show has been recorded, is still being recorded at this moment, and will be here on our website. Um, right underneath our upcoming shows is where we have a link to our archived Encompass Live sessions. And at the top of the list are most recent ones. So um, this is last week's show. Um, this new one to, from today will be posted here at the top of the list as soon as it gets all processed. Um, probably later this afternoon it'll be ready, um, just as long as YouTube cooperates with me. Um, and I'll have it up here, <laughs> everyone who attended and um, registered for today. I'll send you an email letting you know what's available. Um, but as you can see here, all of our things here are just free and open to anyone to watch. So you can just go here and click and you'll get to a recording. Um, if there were slides, um, that's something too if you want to, if um, Amy send me your slides, I can post them up as well for people to look at. Okay, I'll um, do that. Just email them to me sometime later today, no rush. Um, and mm -hmm. you can um, take a look at them there. Um, uh, so that's our show. Um, we also on Encompass Live do have a Facebook page as well. Um, we link to it from our page and all of our session pages. So if you are big on Facebook and you want to keep up on what we're doing on the show, give us a like. Over here we post um, reminders. Like here's your reminder about logging into today's show, when um, what upcoming shows are, are we have, um, when our recordings are available we post on here. Here's one recording from a few weeks ago. So um, if you are big on Facebook and that's where you keep up with things, that's where we do post updates to what's going on with Encompass Live. Um, and at next week's show, I hope you join us for that, is the facets of fair use. Um, uh, here in Nebraska, we have four regional library systems, and the director of our Southeast Library System is Ch Scott Childers, and he is going to talk about um, fair use guidelines and um, how you can you how you can or can't uh, use someone else's intellectual property, the 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 yeses and nos of all of that, um, specifically for um, school libraries, but potentially expanding um, some of these topics could also reach, expand out to publics as well. So if you're interested at all in what you can and cannot do with things that you find potentially online, uh, sign up for that show. Um, and I just started getting our September dates confirmed here too, so we've got some of those coming up. You'll see more time. Um, we do do the show weekly every Wednesday morning, and I'm working on finalizing some uh, dates and descriptions for things. So you'll see a lot more topics Topics will come up here as well, even though it looks a little scarce right now. Um, you'll get that filled up pretty soon. So keep checking back there. Um, other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you, everyone, for being here this morning, and we will see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Okay.